Katie Neon's vision, the future of desktop Linux. Is Katie Neon about to change desktop Linux forever? Today, we're taking a close look at a project that's less a traditional distribution and more a direct pipeline from KDE's developers to your desktop. If you've ever wished you could try the latest Plasma ideas the moment they appear without waiting for other distros to catch up, Neon might be the most interesting experiment on the Linux desktop right now. What KDE Neon is and why it matters. KDE Neon isn't trying to be a general purpose distro with long opinionated release cycles. Instead, it sits on top of Ubuntu long-term support and acts as a showcase. It delivers KDE's latest Plasma, frameworks, and apps straight from the KDE community, with minimal patches and no heavy tweaks. That means Neon gives you the KDE experience exactly as the developers intended, which makes it an ideal testing ground for new features and a fast route to the bleeding edge of Plasma. What makes Neon interesting isn't only fast updates. It's the shape of the feedback loop. By offering a developer testing channel and additions built from upstream Git branches, Neon gives contributors and early adopters a living lab. New Plasma ideas appear quickly, are exercised by actual users, and then feed real bug reports and polish back into KDE. That direct pipeline shortens the time between concept and everyday use, something few projects can match. Recent posts from the Neon team show an active focus on rebasing and keeping those build pipelines healthy, which is exactly the kind of engineering that makes this model viable. The stability meets innovation tightrope. Neon's whole pitch is to balance two competing goals, deliver the latest KDE innovations while keeping the base stable enough for daily work. Practically, that means Neon uses a stable Ubuntu LTS foundation and layers very fresh KDE packages on top giving you new features without rebuilding the entire system from scratch. But that tightrope walk has trade-offs. If a new Plasma component behaves unexpectedly on some hardware, Neon's advantage, speed of rollout, can briefly become a liability, temporary instability. The result is a distro that's thrilling for early adopters and contributors, and perfectly sensible for users who want modern KDE without chasing builds manually how Neon moves the whole KDE ecosystem forward. When Neon adopts a new Plasma feature and a crowd of testers runs with it, the ripple effects are real. Faster iteration uncovers bugs sooner, forces improvements in application UX, and often accelerates packaging and documentation across other distros. In short, Neon sets a pace. By showing what's possible and polishing new features close to upstream, it indirectly pushes downstream distros to catch up, which benefits everyone using KDE software. The ecosystem gains speed and the user benefits from better tested, more feature-rich releases sooner. Where Neon can trip up and who should avoid it? No project is perfect. Neon's rapid cadence can cause the occasional stumble, regressions, corner case bugs with specific drivers, or surprising behavior on niche hardware. For users who prioritize absolute rock-solid reliability, servers, critical workstations, or people who avoid change, a more conservative distro that waits for wider distribution-level testing may be a better fit. Neon's sweet spot is the curious desktop user, KDE enthusiast, or developer who wants the newest Plasma innovations without compiling from source themselves. Beyond desktops, could Neon influence mobile and embedded Linux? The model Neon uses upstream first, fast feedback, focused testing isn't limited to desktops. We're already seeing similar philosophies in other areas, fast dev channels, rolling upstream first testing additions, and KDE's work on Plasma 6 and Plasma Mobile hints at broader reuse of ideas across form factors. If Neon's approach continues to succeed, it could inspire more projects to separate base stability from rapid app desktop innovation especially in areas where user UX evolves quickly. The final test, mainstream acceptance. Can Neon become a mainstream daily driver? It depends on two things. First, continued attention to packaging and QA so updates don't break the everyday experience. And second, clear communication so users understand which Neon edition fits their needs. If users can easily choose between rock solid and early adopter channels, Neon can legitimately serve both worlds, the stable base for daily work and the testing ground for the next generation of KDE features. Now, closing thoughts. 
KDE Neon is less a replacement for existing distributions and more a bold experiment in how upstream software reaches users. By moving the testing and iteration baton closer to KDE's developers, Neon accelerates innovation and strengthens the feedback loop that keeps Plasma improving. It won't be the right choice for everyone, but as a focused showcase and development platform, Neon is one of the most important projects steering the future of the Linux desktop. <laughs>